Hello. In today's ramble, I'm going to answer a question that was asked in the support server about how do you find the bottom of a market. I mentioned using multiple moving averages for momentum as the approach. And in this video, this is exactly what I'm going to describe is that approach. There will be some other rambles in it, but it will focus around what I call the six-way EMA. Now I have six moving averages here. Five minute, 15, 30 minute, one hour, two hour, and four hour. These are all inverted signals. And normally I would be trading on a seven minute chart, but I want to demonstrate why the inverted signals. As you can see here, it buys at the bottom. But because of the inverted signals, meaning the sell signal must be below all six moving averages, it doesn't sell till it gets all the way up here. So this is why the inverted moving averages are important. The six-way EMA on all of these time frames means that you have to meet this condition in order to purchase. All six moving average momentums must be showing the market moving in a trend for a situation to occur. And as you can see, it has a very limited amount of purchases per cycle and a very good profit if you buy and sell by strategy only but as i've said in other video other videos tongue tied there when you buy and sell by strategy only you are in the market longer and have a higher level of risk this is a classic example of some of that risk and you can see how it affects the average and the deviations appropriately to that risk when you use selling by strategy so let's put this to a take profit which is my normal way of functioning and see how much it changes the chart and as you can see, it had a profound impact in the number of trades that took place and takes place. Now the question becomes, is it better to buy and sell here or buy and ride up and sell up here? Well, since everything is percentage based, I don't know that it makes much of a difference in all honesty. I personally prefer the quick trips and collecting the profit as I go as part of my risk mitigation approach. I've never been a fan for leaving a large amount of money on the table for any amount of time. I'd rather get in, get out, and get back in in small intervals that way I can recycle as much as my budget as I can now as I said this is momentum based and I developed this to trade specifically on the seven minute time frame because in order for this to work you have to use the time frames as they are 5, 15, 30, 1, 2, and 4. If you try to knock these out of sequence, then it causes the mathematics to be jolted so that they don't line up properly with the indicators. So in order to prevent this recipe from being easily harvested, I am buying and selling on a 7-minute time frame, even though I'm evaluating on all six of these time frames. So it makes it a little bit more complicated to harvest and manipulate this recipe. And as you can see, 
purchases are when the candles are above the EMA spectrum. Selling is when the candles are below the EMA spectrum. And again, you can see my maximum amount of purchases is two. So this is a fairly limited exposure coin that does well with very limited amount of budget. That being said though, you should always still apply the golden equation just in case. But let's look at another coin. A coin that has a history of difficulty. And as you can see, the six-way moving average does fairly well with this approach, even in DCA. And it still keeps purchases extremely limited. So this kind of approach is a good recovery approach. It is a good and classic momentum approach for finding the bottom of the market. But as I said, and this chart demonstrates it, Finding the bottom of the market is speculative at best. Right here, it believes everything has hit the bottom. All six EMAs show a change of direction. But here, the market drops more. The problems being, of course, subjective to the whole process. So, when you're looking for the bottom of the market, it's an educated guess at best. And that really is the only thing you can say about it. And you can see that some things look like they should do very well. But when you actually look at the market, it buys, it sold right here, it got out. None of this on the right hand side. None of this over here lined up with all six moving averages. So you have a fairly good assurance that you're going to do very well on a reasonable coin basis using this kind of approach. Is it a perfect system? No, it's not. But it is one that does do acceptably well. Let's find another coin. Let's go with Sushi. It's an interesting coin. And it has an interesting market. It's also very limited in exposure. So this actually lets you trade multiple coins easily and I would say if you wanted to overextend, given what I'm seeing for the coins, you could probably have a five position limit for four or five coins, as long as you keep a constant watch to adjust as necessary. So this recipe does allow for a little bit of overextension, as long as you're careful and not trading leverage or futures but spot trading only. Now let's take a look at the actual recipe because the DCA has some very interesting tricks. And that is something that we are going to cover next. So let's look at the DCA module. And the first thing that should stand out is I start my deviation at 4% and I end my deviation at 24%. So, now I'm using an automatic step rate, which means that right now with only two purchases per cycle, my first purchase is going to be at 4%. My second purchase is going to be at 24%. I'm literally using 
the extremes of my deviation as a very strong defensive property. And I went with just a flat take profit because as, street, as extreme as this is for my deviation, I wanted to be able to maximize my take profit. And with the amount of buys per cycle being so limited, I can let this sit and cook and not worry about it. And I have an absolute maximum. Guaranteed limit, no matter what, this recipe will not exceed 10 positions, or in my case, $111, 10 times 11. So this is a very strong and simplistic approach that gives me a very powerful combination. And it creates what you see here. Now I'm going to start down here at this moving average. This is the 5 15 minute combination. I'm using confirmation analysis because I want both moving averages to work together. I'm forcing the 5 minute. So no matter where I set the chart, this portion will only run on 5 minutes. And as you can see, I'm using the standard split channel momentum, and I'm only using EMA. I didn't want to go overboard or overkill. Something very simple to follow with this. I'm using momentum, and I'm using a very small but Fibonacci-based length. And of course, I'm inverting the signals. And the confirmation is 15 minutes hard-coded into the recipe. And the rest of it is identical as above. I do this for the 30 minute and 1 hour. And for the 2 hour and 4 hour. Everything within the EMAs outside the time frame is identical. The only change is the time frame. The rest of the momentum setup is identical on all six moving averages. Finally, the two hour and four hour. And on this one, I'm going to demonstrate why all the weird symbols and colors here. I did that through the styles just so I can keep track of everything. But not a big deal. The important, important part here is the EMA setup. So all six moving averages. This one is the top of the chain. This one is linked to this one. This one is linked to this one. And finally... The DCA is linked to this one. And then my alerts occur on the DCA. And you can pick whatever time frame you want for your chart. You can even trade this on the one minute if you want. But you're not going to see much traffic. Not in the context of the one minute time frame. Not unless you get lucky and all six of them tend to line up for the one minute time frame. You can trade it on the daily chart if you want, but I personally don't like waiting that long for something to happen. You can trade it on the one hour chart, but again, I'm not liking having to wait all this amount of time for things to occur. I would much rather have a significant amount of traffic. So for me, that just works better. Having smaller time frames kick in aggressively. And of course, these styles, nothing overly 
difficult here. Everything cookie cutter in this approach. So really there is nothing unique or special about any of this except specifically the deviation. 4% here, 24% here, two positions. I know this seems extreme, but as this recipe grows and develops up to 10 positions, my deviation is going to be extremely controlled. So, you can use price method if you want, but the way this is set up, you're not going to see much of a difference. And I'll demonstrate that here. The reason being is because the way the moving averages filter. As you can see, the chart really didn't change very much. So whether you're using price or step, I went from two positions to three positions. That was it. So it's very limited because of the way I've set it up. And that is important. This is what I call the perfect recovery recipe because whether you go by price or by step, it's extremely reserved. Now I've already put the chart link in the support area and I'll try to remember to put it in the description as well when I upload this video. So, if you're looking for something that's high yield, high capacity, but still very cautious. The six-way EMA is a very good place to start. And the nice thing about this recipe is it can be extended in a lot of different ways. You can use SSMA, RMI, doesn't matter as long as all six of them are the same. And you will get a consistent level. And now if you want to get experimental and push the envelope of reason, you can also use all of them differently and cross match different combinations altogether. But you will increase the complexity of the algorithms that you are doing. This is one of those recipes that demonstrates simplicity at its best, but it also demonstrates just how complicated you can make the entire process if you're looking to really fine-tune and butcher the market in a very specific approach. For example, this is a seven-minute time frame. Well, here is a three-minute time frame. Let's see what else can we find. How about a 13 minute time frame? So there's a lot of different combinations you can try and really get a scenario that does a good job and a high quality approach. And if you really wanted to use a 57 minute time frame, you can still trade on that or any time frame you want. This is an example of where you are using standard time frames for the indicators, but you're actually purchasing on a non-standard time frame. So this kind of strategic thinking helps you mitigate market problems. You can even go to 15 seconds, but it's not going to speed up the algorithm, only make it messier. And it does get quite 
messy. As you can see, when you go to the 15 second and you look at all six EMAs, it just does some really crazy stuff. It looks cool, but it still does crazy stuff. And for those that want to push the envelope of insanity, well, you can do that too. And actually watch in real time how the chart cycles, builds, and grows. So as you work to develop your recovery recipes, or even just a regular trading recipe, always think of ways of overlapping different time frames. You can do this with Bollinger's, you can do this with RSI, you can do this with whatever recipe you are looking at. Complexity will be appropriate to that recipe, but the unique impact of it is going to be quite something else. So I hope you found this video enjoyable. Like, share, leave a comment if you have any questions. Or of course contact me in the support server and leave some messages there if you want some further explanations or other examples of this unique multi time frame layering. Until next time.